And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Tonight, brace yourselves for a complete shutdown of business in the public sector in the next seven days. Tonight, the public sector workers have all, including nurses and doctors, have declared an indefinite strike over government's refusal to exclude pension funds from the controversial death exchange program. Now, you know that the government announced this exchange program uh, a couple of weeks back. Banks, pension funds, insurance firms, and other institutions holding government bonds will have to exchange your bonds for one that will earn zero interest next year. The new bonds will only begin to earn 5% interest in 2024 and 10% for the remainder of its tenure. The maturity dates have also been extended with the first bonds only maturing in 2027. Well, last week, the uh, workers uh, called the press conference and wrote to the finance minister, asking the finance minister to exempt pension funds from this particular arrangement. They asked that this is done by, by 12 noon today. Other than that, they will call a strike. Well, that hasn't happened, and today they have called a press conference to declare an indefinite strike beginning on the 27th. Listen to the Secretary General of the TUC, Dr. Ba. You may recall that exactly one week ago, we said we were asking government to exempt us from the debt exchange program. We sent the letter and we told the whole world that if government doesn't do that, we will advise ourselves. Today we are here to tell you the advice we have given to ourselves. And that advice is very simple. We have decided, all of us together, that because government has refused until today, by midday of today, to grant us our request that all pension funds, and we are not exempting anything, all pension funds must be exempted from the domestic debt exchange program. We have decided firmly that all workers of Ghana are going to strike on the 27th of December and we will be on strike until our demand has been granted and the demand is simple that all pension funds must be exempted from the debt exchange program. What it means is that all workers of Ghana should stay at home on the 27th of the, starting from 27th. Don't go to work. Stay at home. And, and we will stay at home until we hear publicly that government has exempted all pension funds from the domestic exchange program. That is straightforward and very simple. Between now and 27th, we have a few days to Christmas. From tomorrow, in fact, we have started today. Every worker in this country must signal to government and to their employers that we are not sitting down for our pension funds for the most vulnerable people in this country to suffer because somebody has made mistakes. We are going to be in our red, red band, red t-shirt until we hear on the 27th. And we are not meeting here again. 27th, if we haven't heard anything, we start a strike. If we hear anything positive, we organize another press conference and tell the whole world that the strike is over. But that is when the exemption has been announced. Thank you very much. The unions starting this uh, strike on the 27th join me right now live on the line. Uh, Thomas Musa is the General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers. Angel Kabonu is the President of the Ghana uh, Graduate Teachers Association. Nagrat, both of them, joins me right now. We'll uh, hear from the doctors pretty shortly. Uh, Thomas Musa, let me start with you. So from what I understand, you, you're the organized labor wrote to the finance minister more than a week ago. Do I take it that you haven't received a response yet? 
No, so I think it's important I make this correction. The, the, on the December 12th letter came from TUC to the Ministry of Finance. But before then, the individual unions have already issued statements, and some also gone further by writing specifically to some, the Ministry of Finance and other related uh, uh, institutions to draw their attention, other schemes. Then I find that some of the labor centers also have done same. And so that's the first correction. So the, today's meeting was the, that of organized labor. So this is the very first time that organized labor has met to issue official statement on the opposition on the, the debt exchange program. And today, organized labor was clear. And I think that government has seven labor today. Organized labor should have gone ahead to declare an indefinite strike. But upon several considerations, it was extended to the 27th of December, that is this particular month. And we believe that in the next seven days, government will have to heed to the call of organized labor to exempt, to exempt all workers from that debt exchange program. Now, it is important for me to place on record and for people to understand why this debt exchange program is so good for the Ghanaian worker. Number one, we are dealing with specifically, let me even talk about the tier two. The tier two program is based upon, is a, is a pension system we call defined contribution. Therefore, the returns you get depends upon the kind of uh, investment and the rate at which uh, it, the, your money is yielding for that to determine how much you go home with. And so if government is saying today that next year, next year, there will be no coupon for you, and that has been 0%, and that is 2024, 5%, then it stands to reason that the Ghanaian worker will suffer big time because next year and next two years, your investment will not yield anything for you, and you will suffer for it in future. And that is something that we want to correct now. Number two, it must also be placed on record that some of the patients, uh, the remittances to the various schemes, if you take the Ghana Education Service Occupational Scheme, uh, 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 as they call our remittance, for example, it's in arrears for eight months. That is already a haircut to the, that particular scheme. Because the money that ought to be paid, government has not paid the money for the past eight months. And the 3% that government, the penalty that comes with the government will not pay. So that money has already been a, a haircut. Then the investment that is also yielding that kind of return also, you want to extend your hand into that particular investment, also go and give it a haircut. That is a double haircut. That is a double haircut. And the Ghanaian worker will be worse off. And finally, I want to make a reference to Section 98 of the law. That is the National Pension Act law. It makes it clear that the investment that the scheme has made is in the name and the interest of the individual workers. And so if individual workers who have done their own or individual investors, if their money will not be touched, why is it that workers who have invested their money, the taxes have invested the money in the, uh, in the interest of the workers individually, why should their money be taxed? We don't think that is fair. And we are saying, therefore, that government should not touch the money and government should heed our call. Thank God that we revise our position and we don't think that it will be the best interest of government to get it done. And it must also be placed on record, and which is very important. We are talking about human security here which is an integral part of national security. And I don't think that anybody who wants to compromise on the interest of national security by saying that you want to do a haircut. I don't think so. And we advise government not to go that path. Mm. I mean, Mr. Kambonu, the when the government first announced this, the deadline for the uh, signing on to the debt action program was today, the uh, 19th of December. 
they have extended that deadline to the 30th. And the finance minister, and we'll play him shortly, says in the in the latest update that the reason for the extension of the deadline is to, quote, allow for key concerns raised by stakeholders to be accommodated in some form, end of quote. Is it your expectation that between now and the 27th, when you begin your strike, you raise some, some agreement on this matter? Well, he's locking the table after the horses have bolted. Uh, it is from 2018. Ghanaians have suffered financial mishap. People who have invested their little money have lost money. You all know the monumental failure of the financial institution as they attempt to, uh, they say, financial institution cleanup. And thousands and thousands of Ghanaians have lost money and nobody has been brought to book. Most thank you. Government wants to take decisions for workers who have saved their paltry salary at the end of every month to also lose money once again for no fault of theirs. I ask. Who thought about this program in the first place? You know, so at the end of the day, we are sacrificing our people on the altar of mismanagement of our economy. And our people are suffering from 2018. Ghanaians have suffered loss of their investment. And we are continuing on the same path. But even, let me correct you. This is not a public sector strike. It is the strike of all Ghanaian workers. We are talking about a total shutdown. That is what this means. Not public sector alone, but all Ghanaian workers, including the private sector. Well, when you say that, you, you, you're saying that on the 27th, I should also strike. That, that's what you yeah, mean. Yeah, but, 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 but you pay tier two and you are going to be affected. So I expect you to shut down. I, I mean, my, my employers are listening to you. I don't think they'll take kindly to the suggestion that I should, well, I see, should lay down my two seven seven. This is a directive from the leadership of organized labor to all Ghanaian workers. But you know the internal procedures to follow. I mean, they you 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 have the was this served on the Employers Association of Ghana, for example, possibly? Even no one should do anything for us to lose out. Nobody. At the end of the day, we are going to lose out. You and me. At the end of the day, we will not be able to buy the BP medicine, the diabetic medicine that we buy for our parents or that our parents buy for themselves. This is how serious the situation is. Look, some of the bonds we are talking about were negotiated by the government because of government inability to fulfill its obligation of transferring money to the various trustees. So government negotiated with workers and said, okay, I do not have the money. So I'll convert the money into government instruments. I'll buy bonds at this interest rate. Then after some years, you unilaterally take a decision and tell me that, well, the agreement that I have with you, the money that I owe, you, uh, I owe to you, I cannot pay. What kind of country is this? What kind of country is this? You owe me money. You decide you unilaterally that you cannot pay and you will not pay. I mean, so so where we stand tonight, I mean, you've clarified. So this is uh, all workers on board, including private sector. But let's 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 look at the reality of it. Um, you really expect the private sector to also lay down their tools on the 27th? Well, when UPG shuts down, 
or VRA starts down, will you be able to work? Doubt very much. We'll, we'll, we'll get onto our generator. <laughs> oh, but even this is not well, for you. Maybe your duty is to be broadcasting the realities on the ground. But I will expect you to wear your red armband. If you don't, I will come and put it on you by force. Well, I mean, I, like, like, this is about pensions. So I, I guess p many people will not argue too much with this. But between now and 27th, I, I, I get the sense from Thomas Musa that there's a reason why you've given a, a few more days between the time you're now announcing it and the day it takes effect. What, why is it? Because you, you're hoping you can negotiate a deal out of this. You, no, you're hoping you can avert the strike. We talk government will see reason and realize that it has done a very monumental wrong or it's a major mistake in the first place in announcing such a program that affects pension. And we were expecting that as a result of an act of introspection, government would have revised its mood, especially when government reneged on its fundamental primary responsibility of engaging stakeholders to see whether this is workable or not. But government failed to do that. All that we had yesterday was an extension of the time. Look, let me tell you, as of today, no uh, organization is signed on onto the debt exchange program as of today. Oh, really? Yes. Because today was supposed to be the original deadline. Yes, but nobody I mean, not, not, even the, not even the banks? No. Well, I'm talking about pension institutions. Oh, you mean the pension funds? None yes. of them? Yes. I don't know about others. I have not done any research in that area. Um, let, let me bring in the doctors. Let me bring in the president of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Frank Sribo. Dr. Sribo, thank you for time on Top Story. Thank you very much, Ivan, for having me. I mean, Dr. Sribo, you are not also embarking on a strike on the 27th, are you? Uh, precisely. We are part of organized labor. So we, I was part of the process, and then, of course, I was there when the decision was taken. So, yes, doctors will be part of the decision to embark on strike come 27th. Um, what will happen is that on Thursday, uh, the executive committee of the Ghana Medical Association will meet and uh, we will define how we approach the strike. But definitely, yes, of course, you know, because of the kind of service that we do offer, we just don't go on strike totally, totally strike from the word go. So I am sure we would approach it in a gradation manner, such that maybe on the 27th we'll start with outpatient department and then gradually as the executive committee directs, that is how we'll go. And we will be working together with other health workers, uh, the nurses, the health service workers union, uh, Gospa and all the other health workers, so that at the end they will have the same roadmap and will follow it through. I mean, Doctor Serbo. I mean, the, the the teachers and the uh, you know the public sector workers and others. And when they go on a strike, you know, sometimes you know you can find national service people, etc., to fill it. You, you when you do when you do go on strike, people die. So, so why are you joining this when you know the consequences of this, when there's room to negotiate? Evans, um, the government is aware that when we embark on strike, people die. And, uh, of course, they are trying to kill us also when we go on retirement. The Ghana Medical State has a fund, the GMA fund. If I tell you, and it's only meant for retirement, so you can only assess your funds when you retire. And if I tell you how much we are losing because of this deficit uh, program, you'll be amazed. And this is pensions of people. And I can assure you that with these kind of measures, people will go on pension and they will die prematurely. So um, I'm aware of the consequences of our actions, and I believe that government should not allow it to get to where it has to get to. And usually, we are not insulated from our own actions. Of course, I can't decide uh, my relatives in Efijase and other places when they are going to get sick, how they will get health care and so forth. So definitely, we are all affected. And so it's, a, it's an action that we take with a lot of pain. You remember I was on your show, PMS Stress, and then I told you that there's a need for government to exempt all the pensions 
from this process. Otherwise, we may take a, an action that may not uh, help all of us. But at the end of the day, nobody did anything about it. What we are hearing, the extension of the dates, and there is no suspension of these pension funds. So um, we, have, we can't do anything else. We have to fight for our future, and this is our future at stake now. And so, yes, all health workers will definitely be part of this process, and we will find a way to make sure that at least in the initial stages, if government does listen, we will not uh, have any casualties. But as it is, uh, definitely we are part of the action. We are part of organized labor, and we will be joining the action come 27th. Uh, you know you're an essential service. The, 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 the strict laws guiding your your, your the procedure for striking. The, well, the National Labor Commission will have to come in. and Have you, have you informed them? Of, of the you, know, you know what? This is very good because at the end of the day, for essential service, we need to give even 48 hours notice. We have given seven days notice. Labor Commission is aware. Government is aware. There is only one outcome that we are looking for. All pensions funds should be exempted from this death exchange program. Once that is announced tomorrow, nobody is going to go on strike come 27th. So our fund is suffering. Our private funds are suffering. Our uh, uh, public funds are also suffering. So in this instance, I think that the government has a long rope. And these alarm warnings have been sounded all this while. And we were hoping that with these alarms that have been sounded, at least somebody would have uh, done something about all these things that we, we are talking about. Unfortunately, not. So as it is now, they have seven days or even more. Today is 19th, so 27th is a long time. And if somebody gets up tomorrow and decides that, look, pension funds are not part of this process, then we cannot go back home and sleep. At least my GMA fund is safe. My fund with tier two is also safe. And that, for me, is what we want. And that is how we want all of this to, to turn out. It is not because we are happy going on strike, but it is because somebody decided to take a unilateral decision. And as it is, there was no engagement. There was no form of um, consultation. It was more or less the government getting up one day and deciding that this is the way I want to go, take it or leave it. And that is where we are. So definitely um, we are not happy that we should, it should end up like this especially fighting for your future. This shouldn't be. And I told you the last time that pensions actually are supposed to be sacred. Look, in other countries, people are protecting pensions. And they are doing everything possible to protect pensions. And the U.S. president was emphatic that anything that they would do to protect people's pensions, they would do. So why is it that in this country, we rather joke with people's pensions? Why? Well, this apocalyptic scenario of nurses doctors, lab technicians all calling a strike on the same day can be avoided. I guess it's a reason why um, you've given at least seven days between now and 27th before you call the strike. <clears throat> Is it your, your hope, I asked this question earlier of your other colleagues, that you can negotiate a way out of this between this time if government is willing to sit and talk? I think that the negotiations, the outcome of the negotiation is very simple. Our demand is simple. This ball lies squarely in the court of government. Tomorrow, government can decide to announce that pension funds of all forms and nature are not part of this debt exchange program, and we have nothing to discuss. And there is no strike, there is nothing hanging on anyone's neck, and we are all fine. Until then, 27th, I'm preparing my members. We have already started engaging them. We are seeing, sharing the same on our various platforms. On case they will come out a roadmap on the 27th, I'm sure that together with our colleagues in the health sector, we would embark on this action that we've all agreed. So that is what it is. I mean, so, so you know, though, I mean, this is this is creates a negotiating opportunity. But in negotiations, you you must have a will to concede something. Okay. I, I don't, so I don't what hear, I would I don't, say I don't is this, yeah. Evans, before uh -huh. you finish, government should seed in the cathedral. Government should seed in uh, the size of government. Government should seed in uh, all the free, free programs. And then once they do that, we are willing to talk. So th those are your conditions? Those are my conditions, yes. And I know there are conditions that government will not accept. That's why I'm saying those things. So the, the outcome should be very simple. Tomorrow, government should just exclude all the pension funds. And we are all game. And there is nothing to discuss. And we are fine.
have you written, I mean, the last time uh, TUC wrote separately to government to say ex 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 exempt the pension funds, on the on the back of today, obviously they said they, they haven't heard back from the, from the finance, but we heard from the finance minister yesterday, they didn't exempt it. Uh, has there been a formal letter to the finance minister now communicating your intention, or, or this is something you've just held a press conference to communicate, hoping that you will hear? Well, I think that the Ghana Medical Association on our part issued a press statement, which was widely circulated. Government is aware of our stance on this issue. Everybody knows it. And so if today we get up and government says we are not aware, that is up to them. But the point is that is clear. TUC communicated same. Organized Labor has done same. CLOSAC has done same. GRNME has done the same. Health service workers, you know, have done the same. And as Organized Labor, today we have decided that this is the action that we are taking. So government is aware of every single uh, um, step that we have taken all this while. So I am sure they, they, they know what is going on. And so definitely, uh, 27th is a long, 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 long time away from today. Today is 19th, and 27th is too long. And I believe that if they really mean well, they have enough room to be able to salvage this sinking ship. I'm grateful, Dr. Frank Cerebro. Thank you very much for joining us. And let me ask you a question uh, as we approach news night. Do you support this strike? And if you're in the private sector particularly, I want to ask you that same question um, in the private sector. Will you join your colleagues in the public sector on the strike on the 27th? You've heard their reasons. There's a condition that the uh, doctors have just laid forth that the government should let go of the sponsorship of the cathedral, the budget for the cathedral. The size of government must reduce, etc., as a condition for even sitting and talking. Um, that's their condition. Uh, but fundamentally, as a worker, private or public, will you join that strike on the 27th? More on this on Newsnight in a minute.